welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. Today I'm doing something a bit different and um, well I'm not sure where this is actually going to take us but we shall see. I was planning on doing something in 1 12th scale today but that hasn't exactly gone to plan and I had a new purchase come in which has really got me intrigued. Now if you've watched any of my 148 scale videos you'll know that whilst I love the smaller scale, I love that I can build enough furniture for a room in an, in an afternoon, I love that the houses go together so quickly and that they're small enough that I can let my imagination run riot. My main complaint is that I struggle with the details. Now for me, the details in a miniature scene are what make it. They are the thing. And I've sort of got to the point where I can make a lot of things for 112th scale. I am far more limited at 148th. I've made a few things with paper, I've made a few things by utilising beads, but that only goes so far. I have therefore had to look at um, purchasing some things and that's what I've done this week. I have purchased some details but they need finishing. This is the box that arrived a few days ago minus the address label that was on that side. As you can see it's not very big. Well you wouldn't expect it to be very big because um, when furniture, this for instance is a kitchen chair, is that small, the details are going to be tiny. And um, I'm going to be testing my camera with this because this stuff is small. Now, I bought this from a company called Laser, Laser, Laser Shrink Ray. Um, they're on Etsy, but they've got their own website as well. And it came with this nice little card, which has got some um, cut out and keep bird prints in 112th, 124th and 148th scale. They're kind of cute. So I'd left the paperwork in. So um, I'll um, put that to one side because you don't need to see that. Now, these pieces aren't massively expensive as far as miniatures go because they're not finished. I've got work to do myself. But it does still seem like a lot of money for what you get. And what I get is this little package of tissue. And I have opened it already. I had to. And inside are some tubes and a little plastic bag. Now this little plastic bag actually contains one of the items. And let's see if I get this to go the right way. I'll zoom in a bit. And in that plastic bag is some 3D printed um, kitchen canisters, which are kind of awesome. And in these little tubes, along with my wonderfully sausage-like fingers, is the rest of my items. And they come on the um, bits that they've been printed on, the supports, that's what they call it, isn't it? It's, they're pre-supported. When you see those um, files, it, always say, it says, they just quite often say they're pre-supported. Now, I've got some tape, which feels like it's painter's tape across there. And I'm not sure how this comes out. It goes out this way, that way. Hmm. Okay, that way. And then I've got a set of 148th scale dinner plates. Now, if I pick up that chair again, since I've zoomed in, there's the chair, there's the plates. Yeah, that looks like a good comparison for size to me. Very good. So, um, the idea is that you um, 
can paint them while they're attached to the um, supports and then you can um, cut them free and um, give them a clear coat. Now if I remember rightly the little canisters have got to be clear coated to make them actually look clearer but they've got a hole in the bottom so that you can use um, a little bit of paint inside to suggest contents. So I'm going to finish unpacking the other pieces and then we'll look at them in a bit more detail. Now I should like to point out that um, although I've told you where these have come from I'm in no way um, sponsored on this. This is literally just me buying really, really tiny things and um, showing them to you. Now obviously I've got my set of kitchen canisters. They're going to look great on my um, kitchen counter. I've got a set of dinner plates. I've got, let's do this one, which is a kettle which I thought would look good on my stove. Um, admittedly, in the UK, we would more likely have an electric kettle, but I've got a sort of retro feel to my kitchen, so I figure that this um, sort of old-fashioned kettle, tea kettle, would um, work quite well. And then I've got a tea set with two um, cups and saucers, two little side plates and a bigger sort of serving plate that looks like it's about the same size as the dinner plates. And I'm going to be honest, I'm astonished. I knew these bits were going to be small. They got to be small to fit with the furniture. But when you see a teapot in this scale, it is quite frankly pretty scary. You know, I don't know how well I can get this. I am trying to get this into focus and I don't think it's focusing very well at the moment. Oh, you can see that, you can see it is tiny but it's so detailed. You know, there is, <laughs> the handles on the teacups are actually handles, certainly on the one. I think the other one's a bit more um, solid. I'm not going to fault that. I really am not going to fault that. <laughs> I'm just absolutely amazed that, yeah, and I'm really wondering how I'm going to actually handle them. I am not going to lie that I feel rather out of my depth. I have got my tweezers, which I think are going to be absolutely necessary to be able to paint anything. Yeah, that's going to make life easier. Um, I'm probably going to make life easier when I come to put the pieces in place as well. I need to find something to put them in once I remove them from these because um, they're easily going to go missing. This is quite simply the smallest stuff I have ever worked with. It really is. I mean, they are a bit bigger than some of the beads I've used, but um, only just. I'm also not sure how well I'm going to do with painting them. Now, I would assume that with painting these, um, the sort of paints that you use for painting um, wargaming miniatures would be better. I've only got craft paints, so I'm going to have to be very careful. Maybe water some of them down and I'm not sure that my finest paintbrushes are actually going to be um, small enough 
that is the truth. But we're going to try. We're, I'm going to start off with the um, kettle because I do want to paint this black. I'm not sure what I'm going to use for a sealing coat, a clear coat. I've got various kinds of um, varnish type things. So I might have to have a little bit of a play, maybe on the base material, the support material. I'm not sure. We'll give it a go and um, see how we get on. Yeah, I am, I'm sorry, I'm still kind of um, gobsmacked. Absolutely bewildered by the scale of these items. All of those are quite, um, quite true. So I'm going to get my silver craft paint out. Um, we're going to give painting the um, kettle a go. I have painted my little tea kettle and because it was already black, I've just gone for putting um, some silver on it. Now, I'm sorry if this goes out of focus. I am having a little bit of difficulty with it, getting the camera to stay focused on it. It's not going to work. It keeps coming in and out of focus and I'm not sure why. We've done a change to the camera um, recently and I'm still learning. So, as you can see, really weird angle. I've got um, a silver tea kettle. At least I hope you could see it. Yeah. Okay. I got a silver tea kettle and I've just put some brown on the handle. So it looks like it's got a wooden handle. Um, as these sometimes do. So, um, yeah, that's looking quite good. Now, if I pop this back down here, um, basically, I went for the less is more approach. Tiny, tiny amount of Um, paint on my brush. I actually um, sort of approached it as I would do dry brushing. It was dry almost immediately. So yeah, tiny amount of paint and then um, very carefully applied. Now because I want this to look not perfect, if there's any little black bits that are showing through that is exactly what I want. I'm not really um, too bothered about it. It'll just look like it's a bit tarnished, a bit used. It'll look worn without me having to put any extra washes or things on because I'm really not certain about doing that at this scale. But it's painted and um, getting it to stay in focus aside. I'm pretty damn pleased with it. Next, I have tried to make my little storage containers here, my little jars, look like they have got something in. Um, I've gone with a chocolate brown and a white acrylic so far, and the one on the, the end I haven't actually done yet. Now I'm going to try and do this on camera and I'm using a toothpick. It looks incredibly large, but it isn't. It is just an ordinary toothpick. I've just got an exceptional level of zoom. And I've got some acrylic paint in a sand color. Now this is one of the paints that I've used in the past for um, painting candles. Not my favourite for painting candles, but it's that sort of quite delicate off-white. And all that I'm doing with these, 
if I move the lid of my paint out of the way, I've got a little bit of paint on the end of the toothpick and I am just running around the inside of the little 3D printed jar with the paint and it is a bit of a faffy kind of a process because if you can see I don't know how well this is focusing or not at the moment I've now got a little bit of colour inside of that jar. I could put more in if I wanted, make it go higher up, but um, I might just leave it as it is for the moment. And as I say, it's just the end of a toothpick. Now, if I zoom out a bit so that my fingers don't look quite so astonishing, um, I'm now going to leave this to dry, not that it will take long. I've got bits of paint on my hand, but that's because I've been wiping over the end of it. Um, I believe you can do this with a pin as well, but I've always got toothpicks um, on my craft table, so I've used them. So, yeah, I think those are going to work. I'm not sure what the brown one might be, it might be some cocoa. That seems like quite an appropriate item to be in there. Um, I'm going to paint the tea set. Now, I didn't realise that there was a plate with the tea set, or I might not have bought a set of plates this time. Um, but I'm going to paint the tea set and use that, and I'm probably only going to paint a couple of the individual plates. I'm trying to decide what colour. Um, part of me just wants to leave it white because it's very classic, but with the sort of retro theme for my kitchen, I am considering um, going with a different colour. I haven't got the right shade of green for those lovely green plates that, um, and cups that are still beloved of village halls everywhere. If you know, you know. If you're in the UK, you've probably come across them. Um, I could go with a blue, but there's rather a lot of blue in that kitchen. And what I might do is I might go with a yellow. I've actually got some paint on my table, which is um, vanilla bean, which is actually quite a yellowy colour. And I think that might be what I go for. Might just try a little bit on the um, support part of the support somewhere and then um, see if it works. I have painted my tiny little tea set as you can see with the um, paint I showed you before which is a colour called Vanilla Bean. I couldn't think what it was called. Now it's a very um, yellowy cream colour and I think that is going to work really, really well in my retro kitchen. Now, these pieces are all going to need um, top coating. And what I did is I actually painted one of the plates off the dinner plate set. And I've given that a coat of um, polyurethane varnish on the top. And it works. I wasn't sure that it would, which is why I did it on one of these pieces, because I figured if I muck it up, I can just sort of stick it in a pile it up or something and it won't look too bad. So that is going to work. When I cut it off the supports, I will put a little bit on the other side, but um, yeah, that's looking good. Now, I'm really pleased with this. As you can see, possibly, there's a little bit of yellow on there. That's deliberate. That was me testing the colour on the material. And I'm really pleased with it. I think this is going to be perfect in my little tiny 148 scale kitchen. 
So my next step is obviously going to be to trim them off and finish them off. But I think that I'm going to go back to the um, tea kettle. I'm calling it a tea kettle because I know that's what they're um, what it's called in North America. We just call it a kettle. I'm going to go back to the kettle and I'm going to um, give that a coat of the polyurethane and cut that off the um, supports. Um, but I think I might leave these on their supports for the time being until I'm um, a bit closer to um, ready to put it into the doll's house. This is um, simply because they're so small. Now I found a little pot to actually put the bits in, but I'm still worried. I'm still worried I'm going to lose them. So I may just try and polyurethane the top, um, even though it says to remove them before you clear coat them, and then clear coat the other sides when I take it off. So um, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, do things my own way because I'm worried about losing bits. I have given the little kettle a um, thin coat of polyurethane varnish. Now the polyurethane I've got is a craft one. It is um, DuraClear by Americana. I'm not sure where it came from, how long I've had it, but it seems to be working okay. But I have been putting it on so thin, it is ridiculous. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. Now I'm ready to remove the supports from my kettle. Now, what I think I'm going to try and do, I'm going to try and hold the kettle itself. Use my tweezers on there. And I've got a pair of some very fine wire cutters. Now, I'm not sure where these came from. They were a Christmas present. My husband, several years ago, ruined um, my cutters that I was using. And he replaced them for Christmas because I put new wire cutters on my Christmas list. That's come off really, really cleanly. They are very fine. Um, ease um, into electronics and that kind of thing so he knows what he's buying. I don't but a good pair of wire cutters, fine cutters would um, be ideal. So I've got here in one hand the supports which now looks quite quite bizarre and in my other hand I've got my little kettle and that is just tiny. I can't actually get it to sit on my finger. I can't. That is ridiculous, as I think you'll agree. That is actually at ordinary size. I'm not magnifying the camera at the moment, but I'm really pleased with how it's come out. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it will look in my project. But now I can put some varnish on the bottom. I could obviously, um, I presume, file that down if I needed to, but I don't. I'm just going to pop it down there because I'm frightened I'm going to drop it and um, have an accident with it, but I'm really pleased. Um, I may speak to my brother who paints um, wargaming size miniatures about um, paints and thinner brushes and things like that if I'm going to do much more of this sort of stuff but um, it would be different if I'd got a 3D printer because then I could print my own things and I could um, experiment, play about with it. The prices of these are fairly reasonable as miniatures go especially for something so small because obviously the smaller you go the more expensive it gets one of those wonderful dis disproportionate things. I pay more for miniature things than I would do for full size in some cases. 
yeah pretty crazy anyway um i will be probably having that conversation if um i think i'm going to be doing much more but um all i can say is when i get back into my um, 148 scale project which won't be that long away because um, i've been building furniture and i'm quite keen to actually get the project together and i'm certainly keen to get these into the project you'll get to see them again and you'll get to see how they look in situ so yeah it's been a good one i have just taken one of the little storage jars off the um supports now if i zoom right in i'm hoping you'll be able to see it it's tiny but with the addition of the varnish it does look more like glass it's really weird it's translucent on the supports but you add um, the clear varnish and it does go far far more um, oh and I'm gonna lose it it goes far far <laughs> that is scary it goes far far clearer it looks like glass it is going to pass for glass in my um, scene here is my um, little almost completed selection of 148 scale accessories except for the um, little storage jar that I've cut loose from its supports that's in the box because I'm scared I'm going to lose it the kettle's bad enough but that is like maybe a third of the size of the kettle and um, yeah I keep going to drop it so I'm going to be um, incredibly cautious and put it out of the way. I've enjoyed this. It was a bit of an experiment and I wasn't intending to video it. I was intending to just sort of mention them in passing in, an ordinary, in another video, but I got that kind of um, enthusiastic about it that I thought I'll share it with you. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment and subscribe maybe even ring that notification bell. I put videos up pretty much every week, usually on a Friday, but I never say never because real life has this habit of getting in the way. But until next time, bye.